Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 14. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. So in this tutorial, we are going to uh, merge our user module with our web module. So before we get started, I might as well just mention. I know it's been uh, about a week since I've made a video, and this is mainly because of personal reasons. There are a few unfortunate circumstances that prevented us from actually going forward with some of these videos. But now those have been cleared up, and things should return to normal. Let's get started here. As you can see here in our project folder, we have our original main web app here. It has the upload, the test module, all that stuff inside of it. And this is just all one file. It's got a bunch of stuff like uh, our page save cache file, which you know should be in a database folder. And then we've got our templates up here, our database, create database string, we have a load function and a load source function, and all these are mainly for the back end, or the f really far back end. And then inside of this folder, our user folder, we've got our user module that we've been working on for the past six or so tutorials. And as you can see, it's, we've got our main, our data, and our cookie files. So the first thing we want to do is bring our data and cookie files up into our root folder here. So we're going to get our data and cookie files as well as our index, internal, main, and sign up HTML files. And we're just going to bring them up into web. So we've brought all of them into this folder. Let's close this real quick. And our index file was replaced with the one from our, our user module, but the other files just came out exactly the same. So we have our base HTML file, which we are going to delete right now because we won't need it anymore. We've got our index HTML file, or our edit HTML file, and we're going to rename this to edit, and then we are going to add a few things here. So we're going to say template header, and we are going to also add our nav bar, and then at the end of it, we're going to add our footer. And we are going to do this for all of our old HTML files. So we're going to do it for test as well. So for test, we're going to rename it. Let's just rename it as test right now. And upload, we're going to rename as upload. We're going to insert the header and footer and the nav bar. And we need to make sure, of course, to put our footer and test as well. Let's take our struct, our page struct out of our main function and put it in our data file. And let's remove these functions here. So load source, load, and save cache are all going to go into our data.go. Of course, make sure you get the imports correctly. As you can see here, we're having an issue with string.conversion import. So I'll just go ahead and import that. And with, in, with IntelliJ's Go gland, I can just uh, ask to import it that way. If not, you just type in you know, uh, parentheses string convert. We are going to also have to move our database uh, variable as well as our create database variable into our database file. So we will say var and then paste these in. So another issue that we're having is of course we're using this variable which is leaving our SQL database open the entire time we're running our app. This is not generally something that we want. It's something that works while we were just making our application. So to change that, we're going to sort of put this kind of logic inside of these three functions. Like what we've done here, we're just going to copy and paste all of this in. So let's do this here, do this here, and do this here. And we do kind of want to have the same database for everything. We're going to change it from users.sqlite to something else, though. So let's actually remove this here, because we don't need it anymore. And let's copy and paste the string, and we're going to directly input it in where we are using the variable instead. So there we go. So now we can remove this variable. And finally, let's refactor our users.sqlite, and let's just call it our db. So in every single instance, just go through and change users to db. All right, and we can also, if we wanted to, we could add our cache folder to this as well so that we put our database inside the cache folder every time. And actually, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to put in cache backslash and then the db name. So now, if we go into our main folder, we need to remove all the um, imports that we're not using in here anymore, like these three, or four rather. And we are actually going to remove these templates eventually here. All right, so let's go into our main.go for our user module rather. 
And first of all, let's leave the imports alone. We need to take out the cookie handler. So we need to take that and move that over to our main.go. So we'll just put it up here for now. In my case, it will automatically import Gorilla Secure Cookie. And then we'll go back into our main. And we want to take all of our uh, handler functions here, as well as our render function, copy and paste them into our main.go file. Let's put them all below these ones. And as you can see, we're getting a few errors. So, for example, our Go validator is not being imported. So let's go back into our main user and import our Go validator. So here is the import. Just copy this and move it over. So now we need to actually create the handlers in our main function. We go back into our user main function. We can remove these, which are the handlers. So let's copy these and put them into this main file. And then one more thing that we want to do is we need this Go validator set fields required by default. So let's put that in here. As you can see, we're getting errors from our router. We want to change all of these to HTTP so that they use the default router now. And what this will do is it will actually make these methods become errors, which we will have to remove, which is fine. Now, the reason we're not going to use the Gorilla Mux router anymore is because we don't really want to for this particular application. The reason why we even brought it in the first place was just to show you that you do have alternatives. Now everything should be working perfectly fine, though there are some minor things that we need to change before we start running things. So for example, we've changed the way that our templates work, so we can completely remove these. And in the same vein, we want to call our render function. So we want to say render w, <coughs> and in this case we're going to type in test, because we want the test template to run and then we're going to input p as our page and then down here we're going to do the same thing except instead of test we're going to put in edit and then finally right here in our upload we want to render w and we want to say upload and p so let's run this so here we are at our localhost 8000 let's sign in or sign up rather so let's put in a name tensor with a capital t first name john doe Email will be test at test.com and our password doesn't really matter as long as they match. Submit them, tensor, submit the password. And here we go. So now we're logged in. We have our test page, so we can click this little link that I've created. Test page, we have our edit page, and we can go to our upload file. But here's one of the big problems. We can log out, but we can still manually go into test.test .test and upload and even edit. And the reason this works is because we're not actually using our validation to check and see if the user is logged in to try and get to these pages. So we want to correct that. So we're going to say UUID equals get UUID. And we're going to pass in the request. And then we're going to check to see if our unique user ex exists. So we're going to say if UUID not equal empty string, then we will do all of this stuff. So this will get the, the title and then it will render the page. If this doesn't work then we want to redirect back to our index. As you can see we're running HTTP redirect, passing in WNR and redirecting back to the typical index which is our login form. So we want to add a return statement here so that we don't have a header error and we'll also put a return statement here even though it shouldn't matter. So we want to add the same to our edit function here. So the same type of functionality and to our view function here. Alright, so now if we rerun all this stuff, if we don't log in we shouldn't be able to get to our test and our edit and our upload um, page, which is how it should be of course. So without the cookie you won't be able to get anywhere inside of our application. So here if we go to edit and test it will automatically redirect us to login. Let's log in with tensor and now we can freely go to upload, edit, and test. And if we log out and let's say we want to try and go to test again it doesn't work. Another thing that we want to add is we want to add the ability for the page to automatically redirect from the login form if the user is already logged in. What I mean by this is if the user has or if the cookie has already been issued, the user doesn't really want to be able to see the login form. Alright, so now we're going to check and see if we have our unique user ID here on the login form. But unlike our other ones where we 
you know, actually rendered the page, we want the page to render when our unique user ID doesn't exist. Rather than copy and paste all of this inside of here, we want to uh, actually just redirect here. So we will say http.redirect wr and let's redirect to our example page and we'll put a return statement here. Oh, I'm sorry, we put this in the wrong handler, that's why. So this is the post handler to log in. This is not our actual login form. We need to find where we're actually rendering our login form. So here's our internal page, and then right here we have our sign in form. So here, our index page is where we want this logic. So now let's rerun everything. All right, so now we've logged in, and if we want to go back to the login page, it automatically redirects us back to example. And if we go to the sign-up page, it should work, which is nice. But if we try to go back to our login page, it will automatically redirect us yet again. So to get back to the login page, we have to log out. Now, the reason we're doing this is to make it so that if a person logs in and, say, they close their browser, and they come back and the cookies still exist, then they will automatically log in. Before we go, we're going to do one more thing, and we're going to create a directory. It's going to be called templates, and we're going to take all of our HTML files, and we're going to put them inside of it. All right, so now our template files has all of our templates in it. So now, because of the way that we're rendering our templates with our render function, because we're using parse glob, we can just type in template and then a backslash, so it'll go into our templates folder, and render all of these at once and then based on the handler that we choose to go to it will pick which file to render. Make sure to make the name of templates uh, plural or actually the same as your folder otherwise you're going to run into a huge error here like I just did. Let's clear it and run it real quick. Alright so now everything is working perfectly so if we go to tensor and we type in our password it should work and now if we go to our test page let's actually create these in the database so we'll get our test and our edit page and we'll save them and so now we've created them both in the database so our database now is inside of cache it's it's this db.sqlite we can delete this web.db and let's actually bring out our sqlite browser so as you can see here, our database now has two tables. We have our pages and our user table. So all of these are working quite nicely. And as you can see, our pages has our two pages that we just saved. And our user page has just the user that we created, as well as the user unique user ID and the hash password. So everything seems to be working quite well. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it wasn't anything uh, revolutionary, we didn't really do anything new, we just kind of refactored everything and combined everything together. In the next tutorial we're going to do a little bit more refactoring, though it's going to be something that we haven't done before. We're going to obviously trim down this page, as you can see. We've got a pretty long uh, file here. We want to make all of our files pretty short if we can so we're going to learn how we can do that so if you enjoyed our tutorial please feel free to subscribe and like and if you have any questions of course feel free to comment if you dislike this tutorial then by all means you can downvote and harass us as much as you want make sure to check us out on twitter just recently we had a vote to see uh, what language we should do as our next tutorial set and the winner of that was Rust. Now one of the things about Rust that makes me a little hesitant to do tutorials on it is the fact that every six weeks the version number changes. So I may run another poll to see if you know people want to see some other language instead or I may choose to just go with Elixir for now and wait until Russ gets a little bit more stable. Anyway, if you guys have any comments on that, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Alright guys, have a good day.